Item number, SCP-314. Object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-314 is contained at the location of its original discovery, at Site-47, which has been built around the anomaly. Local personnel publicly operate under the guise of the U.S. Forest Service. Although SCP-314 is highly mobile, it has never moved beyond a 50-meter radius of its origin point. The area delineated by this radius is known as the Red Zone. SCP-314 has created an equally large depression in the Earth below its origin point. All attempts to remove or restrain the object have thus far failed, but containment has been achieved by the construction of Site-47 itself, which is also used for various physics experiments regarding anomalous objects. Any experiments involving SCP-314 must be cleared by Dr. Williams. With the exception of approved experimentation, all personnel are to keep clear of the Red Zone. SCP-314 is highly reactive to all motion within approximately 52 meters of its origin point. Addendum After Incident 314-OE, researchers are reminded that the object's kill radius is approximately 50 meters from point of origin, and for purposes of safety, should be assumed to actually be 51 meters. Although safe interaction is possible at the outer edge of the red zone, and the object may even exhibit what the late Dr. Stratham described as playful behavior at that range, all action within the kill radius has always been met with violent reaction. Description SCP-314 is a 0.97 meter long, 0.21 meter thick obelisk, which is highly reflective and metallic in appearance with tapered edges that are apparently sharpened to a molecular level. No material has ever been recovered from SCP-314. The object is capable of levitation and extremely swift motion, although it lacks any visible means of locomotion. Although research does not indicate any true intelligence, the object is most certainly sentient of its surroundings and extremely reactive to any motions or vibrations within an approximate 50... 52 meter radius. Analysis of rubble recovered from the ground below SCP-314's origin point indicates that the object arrived at this location sometime between 1975 and 1979, which is supported by pre-containment reports from civilians. The object emits no unusual radiation, save for a very faint sound which appears to be an anomalous broadcast of FM, a local classic rock station. Comparisons between SCP-314's vibrations and the actual broadcast of FM are identical approximately 85% of the time, although recordings from SCP-314 often include extra audio in the form of guttural sounds, snarling, and occasional commentary from the late DJ who passed away in 1998 and was not employed with FM after 1983. Research Summary SCP-314 reacts to all motion within its kill radius by impacting the source of movement, although it ignores particulate matter smaller than 125 micrometers. SCP-314 will continue to react in this manner until the triggering object no longer moves, has exited the kill radius, or has been reduced to pieces small enough to be ignored. It displays unerring accuracy. No limit to its speed has yet been established. Current experimentation revolves around introducing multiple targets into SCP-314's kill radius at a time to quantify its method of identifying, prioritizing, and reacting to multiple targets. Multiple slow-moving targets are often struck down in order of their introduction to the kill zone, notably in a method which suggests that SCP-314 is anticipating for their objects to be introduced. In Experiment 314-113, Several tennis balls were tossed into the kill radius by researchers standing outside the red zone. SCP-314 bisected each ball neatly, in such a manner that their remaining momentum took them out of the kill radius, while putting itself into position to strike balls not yet thrown. SCP-314 has correctly predicted when a researcher will only pretend to throw an object, 
as well as when a researcher will fail to throw an object into the kill radius, despite intent. Multiple fast-moving targets, such as bullets fired into the kill radius, can produce speeds from SCP-314 that exceed the sound barrier, or even create the appearance of SCP-314 existing in more than one location simultaneously. Experiment 314-230 flooded the containment room within Site-47. SCP-314 was able to strike at the encroaching liquid with such speed and consistency that it created an irregularly shaped dry sphere within its kill radius. The ground below SCP-314 remained dry at all times. In previous tests and accidents, SCP-314 has allowed liquid to fall upon the ground within its kill zone. When SCP-314 detects motion close to the edge of the kill radius, it moves in erratic patterns that observers have variously interpreted as threatening, graceful, or playful. These motions sometimes correspond to the individuals that provoke them, suggesting that SCP-314 may have some means of recognizing or remembering individuals to whom it has previously been exposed. Containment Breach 7-12-2000 At approximately 3.23 p.m. local time, SCP-314 exited its previously defined area of operation and cut through the walls of Site-47 before returning to its place of origin. No personnel were harmed during this event. This time corresponded with an off-site review on whether or not SCP-314 should be reclassified as safe. Whether this is coincidence or not is yet to be determined, but it clearly demonstrates that we do not know everything about this object or its motivations, or if it is capable of having any. Classification remains Euclid. Dr. Williams. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-313, Powerful Hand Dryer, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.